the reason folks are leaning in on video is because it works. There's data, tons and tons of data and proof points that say video is viewed more, it's engaged with more, and it actually leads to more conversion. So we have the data to kind of support that. So no one's questioning that. The challenge historically has been, how do we make that easy, scalable, and compliant for organizations to embrace you know, using this? So that's something that we've been really leaning in on with organizations, say in the financial services sector, the pharmaceutical sector, the insurance industry, all which are very highly regulated industries, but still have a massive need to communicate with their customer base. Where we're starting to see really, really exciting adoption around this is in the financial services space. And both on the institutional investor side, as well as kind of the retail investor side. So on the institutional investor side, we're starting to see research departments within large financial services orgs lean in on short form video to supplement research reports. The modern day hedge fund investor is a young 30 something who is consuming content on YouTube and TikTok in their everyday lives. Look, it's not a far stretch to expect that they're going to want to get, you know, the highlights of a research report via short form video. So we see research departments leaning in on the institutional side. Similar thing with asset management as well in terms of, you know, really showcasing products and how decomplicating new product offerings to institutional investors. On the retail investor side, it's early days, but we are seeing wealth management firms starting to explore and find success in you know the agents themselves, the the, the, the actual advisors creating content. Some of that is really a, a more personalized in nature. Some of that is taking content that's produced at the firm level and being able to personalize in and around that content. But it gives a way to touch your client base, you know, monthly uh, or more frequently than the once or twice a year that you have an in-person or a virtual Zoom conversation. There is an expectation these days that you as an organization and you as an individual continue to deliver thought leadership content in an ongoing manner. I think that's the expectation. There's a brand building element, but there's an element that like clients want to see that you're constantly delivering information of value. So this concept of thought leadership, it's really about being on the cusp of where things are heading, understanding market dynamics and being able to introduce just in time or in real time content that matters. That thought leadership piece is really, really critical. Again, at a brand level, but also at an individual level. And so we're seeing in industries like financial services and insurance and law firms, pharmaceuticals, this idea that you know folks can be delivering content in a streamlined way to respond to market news, interest rate hikes, uh, reports on inflation, unemployment numbers. What does that mean for you as, a, as a, an investor? What does that mean for you as an institutional investor? And so continue to be able to deliver that content in short form video format is a way to broaden the reach and deliver at scale, which has this kind of brand building exercise of like, hey, my advisor or the firm that I work with, they are thought leaders in this industry. I wanna stay with them. I wanna to continue to park my money with them.